Let's take a look at creating a new drawing format in Creo Parametric. And first thing I want to mention is that you want to use the oldest version of the software that you have. I am currently in Creo Parametric 2.0. I actually have Pro Engineer Wildfire 5.0 installed on my computer, but I'm not using that because most of you are probably unfamiliar with the interface. To start off creating a brand new format, you will go to the new button or use the keyboard shortcut of control N. And then in the type, you're going to select the radio button for a format and let's give it a name. This is going to be my format for D size drawing. So I'm going to call it MCAD. Actually, my company name is MCAE. MCAE format dash D. And then for the common name, you could put whatever other description that you want in here. Now I will click the OK button and we're going to get the specify template dialog box. You have two options available to you. Most of the time I start with empty. There's also the option to empty with section. In this case here, you could browse to a particular folder that has a .sec file. And I'll mention that later on. The drafting tools for formats and drawings aren't as great as the drafting tools in sketch mode. So you might want to create your format geometry if you're doing it from scratch with a section, in other words, a sketch, and then import that. But I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to click cancel out of there. I'm going to start off completely empty. And here we have whether we're doing portrait or landscape or user defined. And here we have our different sizes. And this is going to be a D size for me. And you can see that here are the units for it. So this is great. I will click the OK button. And now here we have the border of the sheet. Probably the best way to get the graphics in is to import the drawing data. So for example, if you have the drawing format of a previous version in some other CAD software such as AutoCAD, you're best off stripping out all the information that you don't need and then importing a DXF or excuse me, exporting a DXF or DWG file and then bringing that in here. To do that on the layout tab, you go to import drawing slash data and I'm going to navigate to where I have some files for this. And from the drop down list here, here we have DXF, you could go to all files, IGIS and DWG and some of the other different formats that you could use for importing. But let's go back to DXF and here I have sheet one from an old legacy drawing. Let's click the open button and then we get the import DXF dialog box. And I usually use the default of model space and leave everything in here the same. And for properties right now, the there's some text that's going to come in as yellow and show up yellow on a white background, which isn't great for me. So you have this button down here, map AutoCAD standard colors to Creo Parametric. And that way, now I'm going to get the text coming in with a nice dark blue color. The geometry is going to come in black and some other entities are going to come in with this grayish color. So that is good. I will click the OK button. And that way I have most of the graphics brought in here already for me, plus a bunch of the text. And if I go and take a look up here, oh wait, maybe I got some extraneous entities. If that happens, you can go to the sketch tab and then select the different entities and get rid of anything that you might not want in here. For example, I also got maybe some other lines in here as part of this table. And I say, oh, you know what? Actually, I don't want that. I just want a single line up there. Get rid of this particular draft entity. Now I just have this single line for another table that I might create later on. Let's talk about the different drafting tools that you have in here. If you've done sketching on a drawing in Creo Parametric, yeah, these tools are not the greatest. And when I do 
uh, use the drafting tools. A lot of times I'll turn on the sketcher preferences if I want to make sure that I'm making horizontal or vertical lines, or you could turn on the display of the grid and then snap to the grid. A lot of times when I do that, I use a really, really fine grid, a very small XY spacing. But I do like to turn on the options for chain sketching and parametric sketching uh, so that I can easily lock into some of the entities that I have already created. Chain sketching is sort of like what you have in sketch mode when you're sketching lines where the last end point is the new star point. Let's close out of here. I'm just going to create a line and for the references let me pick this line over here so I can snap into it. And now that's a reference and then I'm just going to make a parallel line and just eyeball it up to there and then click the close button and probably have to go back and change the formatting of this line so it is the necessary thickness. Uh, but again, I want to mention that sometimes this can be the most tedious process of working on a drawing is doing these different uh, sketched entities, drafted entities in here. I don't see the format that I want, but let me just... All right, I got an okay thickness in there, and when I zoom out, it will look fine. In the past, I have had to create drawing formats where I've only been handed a sheet of paper as a reference, and so then you have to break out a ruler and do a whole bunch of measurements, and then lay out the entities one by one on the drawing sheet. It can be a pain in the neck. For the different indicators for the zones around the sheet, a lot of times you'll just go to the annotate tab and create the various different notes and drop them on the drawing sheet. So again, it can be kind of a pain in the neck if you have to do this from scratch. I highly recommend, again, if you can leverage pre-existing data from some other drawing and then export that to DXF or DW, it is a much easier way to go. Next up, let's talk about getting information filled in on the sheet. So for example, if I zoom in over here, we have some blocks in our, excuse me, cells in our title block where we could list the scale, the sheet, the drawing, the size, so forth and so on. I'm gonna switch over to show you where you can find out the predefined system parameters in Creo Parametric. So first off, if you go to support.ptc.com, you can go to the various help centers. And then when you go to a help center, you can do a search. And I recommend that you search on system parameters for drawings. And the first result that's going to come up will be a page that show you all the different system parameters available for use in drawings. And so, for example, here are your different dimensions and geometric tolerances. Then we have a variety of different parameters. And the important ones are after that group. So, for example, here you have, if you want to list your default angular tolerances from one to six decimal places, corresponding to that is the linear tolerances from one to six decimal places. But some other important ones, a lot of times you like to report the sheet number and then the total number of sheets. So there you can see that uh, parameter in there. The sheet name, if you happen to give it a name, probably not, but other different ones like drawing name and model name, so forth and so on, uh, ampersand scale that you would want to report in there. So let's take a look at doing that. Back over to my drawing, let's say I want to place the scale inside of here. Again, from the annotate tab, we can create a note, and I'm going to do this with no leader, and I'm going to enter it manually and accept the rest of the defaults and then click make note, and then click where I want that note to appear. And the text for the note is going to be ampersand scale. And Again, because I'm doing this in an old version of Creole Parametric, I'm entering my information up here in the small information window that comes open. And then if I want this to be a multi-line note, I could adjust it and place it over there. That's good for that particular note. And then just grab it and adjust its location over here. Actually, that's probably good. For other different ones, for example, the name of the drawing, let's create one other one 
going to create again with the rest of the defaults and ampersand dwg underscore name and that will extract the name of the drawing and then place it in here and like before I can adjust the location of it one other thing to mention though let's say that you want to report some different user parameters in here so for example here we have drawn maybe you want the person who drew it and then check the person who checked it what you might want to do in this case is use a table and then put the parameters in a table the advantage of doing that is that if the model doesn't contain those parameters when someone creates a drawing using this format, they'll be prompted to enter in those different values. For example, let me go to table, and I'm just going to create a table that's going to be one row with four cells, and I'm going to place it over here. Right now, it is really long. Let me go to the height and width, and for the columns, Again, just previewing it and just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to accept that. So for example, selecting this different cell, I'll go to the properties and for the text in here, I'm going to put ampersand and then drawn by. And that way, you'll, the person will be prompted to enter in the value for that parameter. And I can go in here and maybe I want to make this text a little bit smaller to just to the sheet over here for the vertical yeah, you know again you can do the rest of the formatting in here let me click OK and let me do the same for one other cell let's go to properties and maybe I want them to enter a value for checked by and then again with the text down here change the formatting so that's not so big inside of there and maybe I'm going to even adjust the table down so that the text appears a little more properly inside of the cell and so again by using different tables in here someone will be prompted for the values similarly there is a config.pro option that you might want to have turned on let's go to file and then options configuration editor and i'm going to click the find button and there's one that i'm going to look for it starts with the word make let's do find now and it is making this a little wider inside of here make parameters from format tables and so that way when you enter in a value for one of those parameters that appears in a table it can turn it into a parameter and that way if you click yes then it's going to be available if you happen to use those parameters on other different sheets if you use the value of no which is the default then you'll be prompted to re-enter re it anytime that it's used so I'm gonna go and set that to yes and then click add change and then close this out of here and then click OK and I'm not gonna update my personal config.pro so that is one way to get the different uh, symbols in here let's also take a look maybe I want to put in here a symbol for the my company's logo so for doing that let's go to the annotate tab and let's see actually no I'm so, so, so I actually have a DXF file let's go to import drawing data and let's go to my symbols and let's grab a logo and again I'm going to import it as model space and accept all the rest of the different defaults let's map them to crew parametric colors then click the OK button yes I'm gonna to scale to the format and so here I get my logo in here and it ends up giving me a bunch of extra entities in here for the border so maybe I'm going to go in here and for this particular symbol uh, let's go to draft group and I'm gonna grab all these different entities so I can manipulate them together so I'll create and then you can select one or more entities let's click the OK button and for the name of the group I'm gonna call this logo and hit the enter key and then done return and that way when I am working on these different entities I can grab them all as one group and let's say I want to now scale this down 
Again, I'll select that group of entities and then click OK. Select a free point for the center of scaling. And for the scale, let's try a value of 0.125. There, that makes it nice and small. And now I can translate those entities and select one or more items and then pick, hit the OK button and then grab first point for the translation vector, second point for the translation vector. And I can see that I probably need to scale it down even a little bit more. And for these other different entities that got imported in, end up with a few of them in here. I'm just going to go and delete, grab and delete until I get all of them out of there. Quite a few of them. There we go, the rest of it looks fine. Maybe also in addition to this that I have in here, maybe I want to have some text in here as a note for the name of the company. Just like before, I could create a note and just drop it in here. Let me choose Make Note. And then put in the text for the note. I have it in there. And then go to the properties of it. And if I wanted to change the, the style or use a different font, I could do that from the different drop down list. And you have your different true type fonts in here. So, for example, yeah, hey, that looks good. Look, click OK button and then adjust this as necessary in here. Again, normally I would change the scale, but not important for the sake of this demonstration. Now, a format will usually have two different. Uh, sheets, you have your sheet one, which would have the formal title block, and a second sheet that would have less information in the title block. So you can go to the layout tab and click new sheet. Also, there is a plus sign down here, which will do the same thing. And just like before, I'm going to import some drawing data. Let me grab the second sheet of DXF that I have exported. And again, I will go to the Properties tab and map the AutoCAD standard colors to Creo Parametric. Click OK. And that way I have my second sheet in here. If I see any extraneous entities that I don't like, like I got before, hey, let's just go ahead and delete those. And I've got my title block. And just like before, I would put in different notes in here or tables to extract information from my model and report it in the title block and maybe put in my logo and the company name and any other information. Uh, speaking of which, sometimes you might have some standard notes that you want to appear on here. So for example, if I go to the annotate tab, I could create another note. And maybe instead of entering it manually, you can use the file option to make the note. And let me place it lower left hand corner for the notes. Let me go to my standard notes. And here I have my proprietary note. I could click open and bring it in there. And that way, I have my standard note that appears on the drawing in here. So in this way, I'm able to set up my format that I want to use over and over again. Later on, when I apply this format to a drawing, it would extract different values from the model or prompt me for different values that are listed in here. One last thing I want to mention is that Personally, I am opposed to putting any information in a drawing that you can get from your data management system. So maybe you don't want to put in a revision table that lists all the different revisions in here or all the different inf information about the people who are the signatories who approve the release of the drawing. But again, that's just my personal philosophy. I am kind of anti-drawing. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.